we as women ought to move men up, ought to um, produce because we need to understand that as a woman you have the ability to either produce a good seed or a bad seed the choice is yours so that is why we are stating categorically that in this conference we expect to produce women that would nurture perceive and trap and in turn birth life in form of kingdom relevant seeds as in children vision purpose and destiny amen we also agree that for every one of us seated here, we all came from the womb of a, of a woman. We were not sheep, we were not cargoed. We all spent at least nine months for the normal pregnancy period in the womb of a woman. Every great preacher was conceived by the womb of a woman. Every great entrepreneur was conceived by the womb of the woman. In fact, the very Lord and Savior Jesus, who we celebrate today, was born, nurtured, trapped in the womb of a woman. Amen. So we can all agree and we can all see how essential our duties as women is. Now in the Bible, in the book of Luke chapter 1, we we'll begin to see, we we'll begin to see a woman, a certain kind of woman in scripture called Mary. This young lady, a damsel, lived her life. She she was diligent she was, as the Bible could say, a righteous person. And she was okay with living her normal life. In fact, she was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. She was okay with her status quo. She was okay with just the identity of being Mary, the wife of Joseph. And she lost consciousness of her identity as a woman, not until she had an encounter with an angel. And the angel brought to her cognizance that, hello, you are Mary, soon to be wife of Joseph. But there is something also extraordinary about you. And that is the fact that your womb is in need. Heaven is in need of your womb. Heaven needs your womb as a channel. You possess a channel that heaven and humanity needs right now. Left for her, she would have been a very happy, mar happy married woman. She would have gone ahead to give birth to other kinds of children. But there was a reason for which she was made. And that reason was to be the house for our Lord Jesus for a period of time. So that he can come in as man and then fulfill his destiny. I don't know, for some of us, we might be so comfortable with whatever that we may have become. We might, ha we might have gone so far as to achieve academic excellence. We might, we might have gone so far as to achieve uh, business excellence and whatever it is that you're involved in. But the truth is, have you allowed heaven to make use of whatever deposits that, it, that they have kept on the inside of you? For Mary, it was her ability to conceive a savior. For Mary, it was her ability to house and mother a man that would save the world. For you, it might not just be con conception as by giving birth to a certain kind of child, but there might be a particular idea that God has deposited on the inside of you that has a lot of kingdom relevance. And if you're so comfortable with being who you are as by your son name and as by your career and as by your business, then you are actually leaving out the part of you that screams woman. And just as it was happening to our sister Mary, our very own sister, Elizabeth, was also having her own. In fact, Elizabeth had a very weird experience in the sense that she was looking for the fruit of the womb. And we remember that on Friday, we agreed that a woman seeking for the fruit of the womb has no time to waste. She was seeking for the fruit of the womb until old age. It took her time. But when, when, when eventually the seed came, when, when the dimension of a womb man in her was awoken, it took something. All of a sudden, her husband became dumb. If it was to be in our generation now, we would say that that seed, that child she's carrying is an evil child. We'll begin to go to prayer houses, seeking for solutions that we, do, we cannot find. But as a womb man, and if it was to be us now, we'll go back to God and be like, God, are you sure you are the one that gave me this child? How can you give me a blessing? and take the ability to speak from my husband. But as a woman that she was, she was able to understand that it is what a process. And if you remember on Friday, we also said that when you're going through something as a woman, you must have the consciousness 
that you're not going through it for yourself alone, but you're going through it to help another person. Sometimes as women, we go through experiences to help us meet wife and other person's pregnancy. We go through experiences to help us meet wife and other woman. And that was exactly the case of Elizabeth. Not too long, Mary came calling. She had to stand in now as a woman and as a midwife. With her own experience, she was able to tell Mary, Mary, calm down, I understand. In fact, my own, my husband lost his ability to speak. Your own is that you are still thinking of how to go and tell Joseph. But God, the man that gave you this experience, has the ability to tell Joseph. But what would I do when the man that gave me this speech took the ability to speak from my husband? She did not go back into her closet to start crying. She understood that I'm going through this process for somebody and myself. And she was able to midwife her situation as a woman and midwife the situation of another woman as a woman. This is a reminder to you that no matter what it is you might be going through right now, you need to understand that it is not for yourself alone. You might not be able to give advice to that person that will come to you unless you go through the same experience that the person has gone through. You might not be able to understand exactly what that person is saying to you until you have been through that same experience. And that is exactly what Elizabeth did for Mary. She gave her that solace. She gave her that consolation. That baby girl, it might be tough right now, but you have to understand that it is a process. She gave her that understanding that baby girl, you might not, it might not look like it right now, but you have to understand that as a woman, there are certain processes that you must pass through. As Mary and Elizabeth were there consoling each other, midwifing each other, a very old prophetess, Anna the prophetess in Luke chapter 2, was also preparing her environment. And if you can remember on Friday, we said that the womb prepares his environment whether or not it knows life is going to be planted. Now, Anna the prophetess kept preparing her atmosphere for the period of 85 years. 85 solid years, Anna the prophetess was busy preparing the environment so that once she sees the Son of Man, she can tap, tap into the Spirit and get the prophecies that is needed at that time. See, when I went through that part of Luke chapter 2, I got to understand that it is very possible that the only reason why God kept that man in that temple was for the purpose of the prophecy. Now, if she had gotten tired and up and left, then who would have given the prophecy? This was as the dedication of Jesus. She was a widow. What else are you give? You are married. Your husband has died. And you are still with. The Bible says she was in the temple day and night, worshipping her God. As a widow for 85 good years, she was preparing her atmosphere, not to raise the dead, not to heal the sick, but to tap into an information that is necessary and needed for her generation at that time. It got me asking myself, does it mean that there are no younger prophetess in her time? Do you know this is an 85-year-old woman? As a woman, eh, you, have to lose, you have to lose sight of your wristwatch. Because there, 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 I think there's a preacher that once said, how can you say God is late? Are you the one that sets the time? She stayed for 85 years. And because she was diligent enough worshipping day and night, consistency, if you remember we talked about consistency on Friday, because she was consistent, immediately she sighted the baby. She tapped into the information and released it and everybody was happy. For some of us, we might say we are too busy. God just be roaming around. Be looking for how to whisper something to you, but you are extremely busy. I'm telling you now that an 85-year-old woman lives in the temple just for the purpose of an information. As you're seated here as a woman, you don't know the information that you are sitting with. It might be the information that will move the destinies of men forward, and you are just sitting. You need to begin to tap into the dimension of yourself as a woman. You need to begin to understand that, see, 
I am not just Atuma Shalom Chiamaka. I'm a woman. I have a responsibility to myself and the body of Christ. And your own body of Christ starts from you. You know when we are thinking about dealing the body of Christ, we are going far. It's still LGP. I have a responsibility to bet something that would move the vision and the mission statement forward. I am not just a girl. Are we together? Now, as Anna the prophetess was prophesying, I took um, I took a, a, a journey backwards and looked at Esther. For some of us, I would say, eh, I don't have an origin. Esther, the only thing we know about Esther is that she's the cousin of Mordecai. That's all. For some of us, I'll be giving God the head because I don't have anything. Esther did not have anything. She only had Mordecai, and God has given us a Mordecai in the house. But some of us, I want to tell God, God, you know now, I don't have father, I don't have mother, I don't have uncle, I don't have auntie. Esther only had Mordecai. That was it. That was it. But she was, she was diligent enough to listen to instructions. As soon as news went across that, ah, King Ahasuerus has chased away one evil womb man. I was in need of a good womb man. But the guy told her, oh, yeah, oh, up and go. She did not start asking, and the guy, do I have clothes? Have I eaten well? Am I well fed? She packed her bags and left on a journey that changed her life forever. When she got into the palace, she began to find favor. And that's something that is very consistent with a womb man. If you are truly a womb man, finding favor is not difficult. It's not difficult. She found favor. And then all of a sudden, process by process, step by step, she became a queen. And then she felt all right. This reminds, this speaks to us as some of us, we will start a journey with God. And he begins to form certain things on the inside of us. And then when we get to a junction, we abandon him. And then he said, thus far thou hast helped me. Thus far I shall share the she got into the palace and became too comfortable as a pregnant woman about to enter labor. You are chilling. Destinies are about to perish. Even when she heard that they were about to eliminate Israel, she did not do anything because she felt because she's in the king's palace, then she said, then her Mordecai came back again and sent the message to her. And if you think you are safe, think again. No? Fast she was once there. She, she thought she was alright. And she's no longer there. And all of a sudden, Esther realized that Kai, I'm a queen, but I'm a woman. She said, okay, send this message to Mordecai. Tell him and the Israel, you push go and fast for three days. Let me too go and do my own fasting for three days. In that three days, she was transforming herself back to the womb man that she used to be. She was regaining the consciousness of her identity. She was beginning to remind her spirit, soul, and body that you are not just Queen Esther. You are Queen Esther, the womb man. Remember what affirmation says, I am me, then the womb man. She is Queen Esther. Then there is no full stop there. It's a comma, the womb man. For the period of three days, she was inside. She was cooking up something on the inside of her. She was like, Holy Ghost, so yao, you called me out from my father's house. Now I'm here. And I know there's a reason for putting me here. Transformation started happening. She began looking. You remember we said on Friday that after diffusion and everything, before your baby gets into your uterus, it begins to lose certain things and it begins to gain certain things. For Esther, she was beginning to lose the consciousness that everything is actually all right. 
And she was beginning to get the consciousness that I am not ordinary. I am Queen Esther, the woman. I have an assignment that I've got to do for my God and for my people. She was beginning to regain the consciousness that everything is not okay. And with that consciousness came an audacity. On a normal day, Esther will not risk her life for anybody. But with that consciousness came an audacity that she said, if I perish, I perish. I don't know how many of us so, would decide today that if I perish, bah, I perish. But you see this book that God has given unto me, it will bet things, it will bet possibilities, it will bet kings and queens. Yesterday, during our um, ladies' talk show, our father told us of a woman that gave birth to, I think, 15 children. Five died back, 10 remained, and two at Wesley's. I think Charles Wesley and uh, John Wesley, right? See, eh, the era of giving birth to children that does not know God has gone. It is time that when they are right inside, you are telling them, oh boy, oh dear, you don't have a choice. In this life, ba, you do not have a choice. If God has given you a vision for a business, you begin to tell yourself that this business does not have a choice that will become so big that it becomes of kingdom relevance. It brings forth kingdom advancement. We don't have the time, but if, if you think that being a woman is about holding the mind, go and look at Proverbs 31. That woman was industrious. She owned landed properties. For, from her mouth came out words of wisdom and knowledge. She traveled far and came back with the goods of the land. So it's not just about holding mic and standing here. There is something God has entrusted in your hands and he's trusting you to make of it something beautiful, something that will add value to the kingdom of God. Like I said to, to, to the ladies on one occasion, it is not a bad thing if, if we come to church and ladies actually do you well. You are a womb man. You are a womb man. You are a womb man. You need to start tapping into the realities of your identity as a womb man. And if you remember, I just said as a womb man, you, you don't struggle for favor. Immediately Esther showed her face. The king said, ah, Esther, what do you want? I will give you up to half of my kingdom. You need to start tapping into the realities of your identity as a woman because you are not normal. I don't know if you are normal, but me, I'm not normal. I'm a woman and there is something cooking on the inside of me and that thing must get ready and it must come out. It must come out. That is what I need you to tell yourself. That is what I need you to tell yourself. That is what I need you to tell yourself. That you are not ordinary. You are not what? You are not what? You are not what? Don't limit yourself. You can do more than you think. You have the ability to do more than you think. Please let me understand. Minister to me as I minister to you. Holy God. 